Now that we've just finished talking a little bit in general about biomechanics, I wanna dive deeper into one of the most important topics that we'll cover in this certification, and that is ground reaction force. Now, ground reaction force drives so much of our human motion. It is the force that precedes the motion that we're gonna look at in the golf swing and in other aspects of human motion. Ground reaction force literally comes from Newton's third law. And if you remember that from your science class back in junior high, it was this. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That is where the ground reaction force comes from. It is a direct reaction to the internal forces from my body. As I stand up and interact with the ground, I can utilize my muscles to push on the ground in certain ways, and then that ground will push back on me, creating a ground reaction force that will be equal and opposite to those muscle forces. It's what I love about humans. Humans actually have the capacity to move themselves. I've never seen a chair move itself. I've never seen a desk move itself. And that's because they lack internal forces. They just sit there on the ground. Is there a ground reaction force? Yes, but it's not going to, you know, all of a sudden change its size, change its direction, and start moving a desk on its own. Well, as humans, we can. We can alter and utilize these muscles in certain ways, creating an internal force that changes that reactionary force from the ground. It's a powerful way that we can create changes of our center of mass, changes of our body's motion, and create the movements that we want. Now, as we talk about ground reaction force, on a very high level, there are three really important components of a ground reaction force that I think it's important that we all understand. And to depict this, I'm actually gonna hop up on these plates, right? So one of the first things that we talk about as it comes to ground reaction force is going to be the magnitude of that ground reaction force. That literally is just a representation of how hard am I actually pushing on the ground, right? And you can see here that as I start kind of moving up and down, I'm altering my internal forces. I'm going to change the magnitude of that ground reaction force, meaning how big is that reaction force or how small is that reaction force? That's the magnitude. Another aspect of the ground reaction force that is really important is the direction of the ground reaction force. So I can look at how I produce force up and down. That would be the vertical ground reaction force. I can look at how I actually generate force kind of side to side, and that would be my lateral ground reaction force. The final way I can produce force is kind of these heel to toe forces. And this would be my anterior posterior ground reaction force or towards the ball and away from the ball in a golf swing, right? That's the direction of the ground reaction force, up and down, left and right or lateral, heel and toe, anterior or posterior. The final thing we like to look at in the ground reaction force, again on a high level, is just where is the point of application of that ground reaction force. And this is a really cool aspect that we can start to look at, which is where is that player, where is that individual pushing on the ground underneath their foot? Where is the point of application of the ground reaction force? Right? And once we start to kind of compare these things and look at these things together, we can get a real understanding of how that individual is utilizing the ground to create their motion, okay? Now, I understand that this can be incredibly uh, difficult to really wrap your head around. The idea of internal versus external, uh, the idea that ground reaction force is backwards, meaning that these force plates are depicting the ground reaction force, they're not showing those internal forces. So as I push down an internal force, the force plates are gonna show this push up, a ground reaction force that is positive. This can be really confusing. And so what I actually want to do is hop on these plates, utilize this chair, and kind of show you a lot of these cool depictions of human motion in different directions, uh, different magnitudes, so that you can really understand how this ground reaction force works. All right, now, again, we wanna show you a lot of really cool practical examples of how this actually works with cool visuals. And so I grabbed Tyler here. I think you really start to depict how we utilize these forces. Mm -hmm. And so Tyler, let's start with uh, vertical force. Yeah, sure, right? let's do it. So um, again, Tyler's gonna sit on this chair. 
And we're gonna start to look at things like, again, magnitude of the vertical force, what's happening from the standpoint of Newton's law with the internal versus the external. Mm -hmm. Again, remember these internal forces as Tyler starts doing some of these vertical motions, which are gonna change his center of mass in the vertical direction. That's coming literally from his ability to contract muscles. You know, maybe primarily what's going on with his quads and glutes right here to create straightening of the joints. Now, I think this is a really cool depiction of the interaction of internal versus external forces. So I'm gonna actually have Tyler just pick up his right leg. Now his foot doesn't have any interaction with the ground and we can contract his quads and we see this beautiful straightening of the knee, exactly what we'd expect from the quads, right? That is an internal force that is creating some motion of that joint. That's what we'd expect. Mm -hmm. Now, when Tyler actually creates a firm connection with the ground, and does that same thing with his quads, creates a straightening effect of his knee. Now we can do that and see what happens. And now Tyler stands up and we can actually see a ground reaction force start to appear. What we're seeing now is this power of Newton's third law, which is that these external forces are creating changes in Tyler's center of mass, right? That's the interplay of the internal and the external in that relationship. Right, so the internal is me contracting my muscle the external is the ground kind of pushing back against that and causing me to stand up. Exactly. I think that's sometimes where people get a little confused with ground reaction force and Newton's third law is this equal and opposite mm -hmm. concept. So I'm pushing down on the ground and the ground is pushing back up, causing me to, to stand up. Exactly, and we would never suggest, Tyler, that the ground is automatically gonna create motion. It, right. it just won't. I'm standing here and the ground isn't automatically pushing me. Sure. But once you start interacting with those internal forces, that's when the external can step in right. and create those changes. In other words, if you suspended me in the air and I contracted my quads, they'd again, my, my, my legs would move, but I wouldn't be able to you know, make my center of mass move three exactly. or four feet in, in the air until I actually stand on the ground and can jump you know, and have something to push against. Yes, yeah, perfect. Now, let's look at some things as it relates to the magnitude of this vertical mm -hmm. force, right? So Tyler did a, a stand up, which we get a specific magnitude when he stands up. Well, just a simple stand up gets a certain magnitude, but if we were to stand up and then create a jump, now we can see an even bigger magnitude of that ground reaction force because his center of mass is now moving to a greater extent. That's gonna, that's gonna necessitate more force sure. because there's a larger change in motion. That's a really cool example mm -hmm. of the vertical ground reaction force. Right. And right. you can see in the graph there how when I stand up, it goes up to a certain height, but then when I jump, it goes up even higher, showing that I'm pushing even harder down on the ground when I'm actually jumping and that causes a larger displacement of my center of mass. Exactly, and we can see it in the 3D force vector view where we can see right. that overall force vector actually shoot up a little bit yeah. and then even more with that jump, mm -hmm. right? So let's jump into another one of these forces. Mm -hmm. This is the lateral force. So this is the force that is the side-to-side -side force. Mm -hmm. When in a golf swing, we might think of this as kind of towards the target, away from the right. target. And again, let's do some simple things that we might yeah. see. Now, my favorite one is just kind of a lateral bound, right? Mm -hmm. If Tyler wants to jump to the right side, remember that's the ground reaction force that we see go up. Again, this would be in the negative direction, but that's coming from Tyler actually pushing with internal forces kind of towards me right. and then creating a reactionary force that shoots him kind of in that opposite direction. Yep. Right? Yeah, absolutely. It's like I think of athletes like really dynamic athletes maybe a basketball player or a soccer player when they're playing defense right and they need to cut over mm -hmm. you know into the right quickly they're pushing really hard to the left to to make that move to to track their defender yeah for sure that's a i love that example as well right so it's our lateral force mm -hmm. right side to side yeah. forces the last one we talk about is this anterior posterior forces so this mm -hmm. is anterior in front of tyler posterior to the back of tyler and again remember the opposite nature of these reaction forces. So if Tyler wants to shoot this chair and slide the chair backwards, he's gonna push really hard kind of towards you, right? Mm -hmm. And he's gonna get a reactionary force that shoots him backwards, right? And right. this is a cool example of this equal and opposite. He's utilizing his muscles, he's interacting with the ground to create that external force, and now we actually get that pro uh, propelling of motion to the back, Yep. right? All right, so I just wanna summarize real quick what we've talked about over the last couple minutes. And there's two main concepts here. One of them is this internal forces versus external forces. Internal forces is the, the muscular contractions that mm -hmm. I'm creating in my body. And the external force is the ground reaction force, how the ground is pushing back and, and causing me to actually move. 
And then the other part of that is Newton's third law, this idea of equal and opposite. So in motion, in ground reaction force, if I want to move one direction, mm -hmm. I need to push the opposite direction. So to jump right, I need to push left. To jump up, I need to push down. To jump back, I need to push forward. Yep. And I think that's really critical as we dive in further into the forces we use in the golf swing and really understand that this equal and opposite reaction is critical to, to ground reaction force and how we move. Now that we've walked through some really cool practical examples of Newton's third law, the internal versus the external, the opposite nature of these forces, now we want to step into why do we actually care about the ground reaction force? And there are definitely a couple of reasons that come to my mind when we think about ground reaction force and its influence on the body motion that we see in a golf swing. And that's, that's a big one, right? Is that ground reaction force is that force that precedes the motion. Now, we often think about that as it relates to just the golfer's body motion, right? Which way are they moving up and down, left and right, some of the rotational motions that they would create. But it's also to, important to understand that they also have this connection with the club. And as they have a connection with the club, as we start to measure and look at these ground reaction forces, they for sure will influence things related to the golf club, the delivery of that golf club, how it moves through the swing because of that attachment point in the handle. And if we're influencing the body, if we're influencing the club, then it won't shock you to understand that on the very end, we're definitely gonna be able to influence what a golf ball does during the swing. And that's why we care a lot about the ground reaction force. The other reason why we care about it, it is because the ground reaction force can actually be altered and changed, right? I'm not, would never suggest that a golfer just stands on the ground and automatically they're gonna move perfectly and the ground reaction force is gonna push on them in all the right ways. In fact, most of the golfers that I measure have a lot of room for improvement as it comes to their ability to utilize the ground. But what's awesome about it is that when you can measure the ground reaction force, because it is an invisible force, you cannot see it, you have to measure it. But when you can measure it, you can actually know what you need to change and you can change it. That's what's powerful about the ground reaction force. And in some golfers, we can see large changes very quickly, right? There's some technical things that we'll show you throughout this certification that can very quickly elicit some changes in that ground reaction force and then the associated body motion and influence that club delivery of a golfer. Some golfers, it might be a little bit of a longer process, right? They may need to increase the capacity of their internal forces. They, they may need to actually be able to create bigger, stronger, faster muscles. But we can also detect that using the ground reaction force too and give them a way to work on things in their body that will help them create better internal forces that will then help them create better ground reaction forces during the golf swing. So these are some big reasons why the ground reaction force is so key and so important to understand, to measure and to train, okay? The very last piece I wanna just hit on very quickly is this difference between ground reaction force and, and pressure. Now, I believe that each one plays a very important role in the golf swing, a very important role in how we understand how human motion is created and achieved, but force and pressure are not the same thing, right? We'll go into a lot of detail on the individual ground reaction forces and how they work in the swing, We'll also go into a lot of detail on how pressure works in the swing as well. Now, ground reaction force is actually literally looking at how hard is that ground pushing back as a result of those internal forces from the body. We can get magnitudes of ground reaction force, you know, two times body weight of vertical force. Whereas what pressure is gonna really look at is just kind of how we're distributing that pressure. What's the trace of the pressure? Where are we pushing on our feet? Maybe some of you have seen you know, heat mapping of a foot. That's gonna just tell us like, where is that person pushing? A lot of that point of application can come from those pressure traces. Pressure also can tell you if I'm, you know, 75% on my trail leg, 25% on my lead, and then 75% on my lead and 25% on my trail. It can't tell you how much force that person is producing, but it can tell you a distribution of individual legs, especially if you're able to do that with kind of a dual pressure map. Now, again, ground reaction force is just such a key component of everything we do in a human motion. It's definitely a key component in something that can help golfers get better, swing the club better, hit the ball better. So this is why ground reaction force is such a key component of everything we talk about here at Smart to Move.